There's three things that I think I can talk about with some authority. Real estate, handicapping thoroughbred racehorses, and golf. Well, maybe not so much golf, but for sure, handicapping thoroughbred racehorses and real estate. I'm going to talk about the National Association of Realtors Settlement, which is the big topic. It's confusing. I have people that are not real estate agents asking me questions, even though the media is all over this and everything else. And I'm going to tell you how it actually is in the trenches. If you are interested, I'm going to try to simplify the whole thing. So I thought I'd start, we're not going to talk about horses in this video. Um, I thought I would start uh, telling you about my experience because if somebody's telling me some information about something, I'd like to know where are they coming from. So I've been doing this for 37 years. Um, it's a very, very difficult business because it's highly complex. It's very legal. And uh, in South Carolina, to be a regular just real estate agent, you have to take a 90-hour course and then pass a state exam, which is difficult. To become a broker in South Carolina, you must be a, an agent for three years, then take 60 more hours, then take a state exam, which is really difficult. So in previous videos, I've told you it's sometimes good to work with a broker because they are educated people in the business. There's good agents too. But I tell you that because I've been doing it a long time. At one time, I was a, a licensed broker in five different states. So I've uh, been doing it a while, know the ins and outs, and still learning because there's always something coming up. Look at the NAR thing. So... Um, You've got to figure out how to get around, not get around it, but a different way of doing this. So anyway, that's my background. And I wanted to explain the uh, concepts of real estate. Most people in the world, not real estate agents, it's confusing to them because they buy two, three, four, maybe five houses in their lifetime. That's a general statement. So you might buy a house... 12 years later, you sell it and buy another. You don't remember all this stuff. People ask me all the time some pretty basic questions because they're just not used to it. We do it every day. We do the ins and the outs, all of the legalities, what's required, everything else. Seven years ago, I wrote this. Most real estate clients don't know how to buy, resort, or retirement real estate, so we created a framework to help simplify the buying process in an area clients don't know or understand. And I think that's so true, especially around here. It's all gated. So you can't even get into the, uh, the community to look at houses. Who's getting the raw end of this deal? First time home buyers, because they may end up to have to put a down payment down plus pay a commission. Um, the other people, it's the buyers, because they may have to come out of pocket uh, commission dollars, compensation, because realtors are not going to work for free. So, and they say in the news, the media, well, it could lower housing prices. Okay, so the guy has a $500,000 house. He had to pay a 6% commission. Now it's going to be a 3% listing commission. Everybody else is on their own. So there's a reduction there. Is he going to lower the price of his house? No. Negative. That's not going to happen. When you become a real estate agent, in most of the states I've been in, it was a requirement to join the National Association of Realtors. I wasn't very happy about it because it's expensive. The fees are expensive. And this is one of the problems with real estate agents who get their license. They have grandiose plans of having their own business. And all of a sudden, you've got to join all these different associations. The fees are killer. And the training's not there. They're kind of winging it. And it just gets very difficult. The National Association of Realtors says 
about a 70% failure rate in the first year. After three years, it's 87%. That's pretty rough. You got a lot of people coming in, going out, coming in, going out. So um, it's also going to wipe some agents out because they're not going to quite get this because you've got to be able to deal with people, explain fees, and navigate around all this. The, con the concepts of listing and uh, working with buyers in real estate today. Listing, most agents want to get listings. Charter One Realty, who my license is hung with, they're a listing company. Most real estate companies do list because when you get the listing, you put it into the MLS, it goes everywhere, and all the agents with clients come to you with their clients, and that's why. So the other side of the coin is working with buyers. Here's where it's going to get difficult. When buyers come in and sit down with us, we're going to take buyer's agreement, slide it across the table, and ask them to sign it because that's the prerequisite from the National Association of Realtors moving forward. You cannot put the compensation in the MLS for other agents to see, and you cannot, excuse me, you must have buyers sign an agreement prior to working with them when that agent is explaining about agency to the buyer. And before, in South Carolina, we would give people the agreement, they'd go, yeah, yeah, okay, I'll think about it. Why? Because they're unsure of their timetable, they just want to look, they're not sure what they want, and they don't even know you. Now, we have an advantage because of our YouTube channel, and people feel like they know us and they come down and we have a good working relationship. By the way, if you're looking at this video, please subscribe to the video. It really pushes out good content uh, to other people and they find the channel and it's good for the channel. So, back to the situation. So, listing clients need to sell their house. Buyer clients want, 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 but sometimes they don't know what they want and it's a learning process, and they have to sign a legal agreement saying that they're going to have to come up with a compensation for the real estate agent. So uh, they're gonna have to get used to that, and if you come down and see us, or actually any other realtor down here, uh, they're gonna ask you to sign the uh, buyer's agreement. So doesn't mean you have to buy anything, but it's not really cool as an agent to just ride people around you don't get paid it's not too much fun so so take a look at this sheet it's the mls sheet i stripped out all the important information and this is a sheet as realtors that we go by this sheet because do you see that three percent that's a co-brokerage commission and some agents if that thing is this is prior if it's two percent or one it's possible they wouldn't even show the property so that, those numbers, the compensation is going to be removed. We will no longer see that because NAR, National Association of Realtors, is removing it. They are uncoupling it. It used to be coupled. You had to do it. Now it's going to go away. So let's say an agent, moving forward after mid-July, goes in to get a listing. That agent says to the seller, this is great, we'll list the house. I charge 2.5% or 3% or whatever the number is for a listing side of the commission. And this is awesome. You don't have to pay 3% anymore. Get all the paperwork signed. I'll send a photographer over. Actually, I'll just take pictures with my cell phone and save money. Anyway, they'll leave. That, in my view, is a great disservice to the seller because what they should say is, okay, we're going to list everything. We're going to bring a photographer in, take really nice pictures. Uh, we charge a 3% commission for listing the property, but I highly suggest that you offer a, an incentive uh, to buyers, agents out there, because if you don't, you're going to miss a lot of people looking for homes. You're going to miss a lot of people because they'll know that you're only paying the listing side and they don't want to pay a commission. 
So that's going to hurt. If you're the buyer and you don't want any of this paperwork and you don't want to pay a commission, so here's what I'm going to do. I, I look at Zillow, I see the listing agent, and I'm going to call the listing agent because they're going to call a pass for me in on the community, and I'm going to go in there, I'm going to drive around the community, I'm going to, and that agent will be waiting for you, and you'll walk in, introduce yourself, and that agent 100% works for the seller. And they're trying to get the most money for the seller, okay? So you act interested, you like the property and this and that, so the agent can represent you also, but it's called a dual agency, okay? He's already got the seller. Now he's gonna work with you. It's not a good situation. So what he could do is he could contact somebody on his team or in his company to come over and help him keep, keep arm's length and split the buyer commission, okay? Because he referred it to his friend who's gonna help He's going to be over here negotiating and he's got the listing side but there is no commission because the buyer doesn't want to pay a commission do you get the drift so the proper thing to say to a buyer when you're trying to get them to sign a buyer's agreement is this is i don't know how it's all going to play out but this is early in the game and this is what i believe i'm going to say my team is going to say I understand your, your frustrations, your concerns, but this is a new world we live in. Do you only want to see homes that are paying some type of incentive, buyer agency commissions or anything like that, or do you want to see everything? Because if you only want to see the commission ones that I know of that are offering incentive for you, you're going to limit your pool way down. You're going to miss a lot. Now you could say, I guess, well, let's look at everything and we'll just put it in an offer. You could do that too. You could work it out. So I don't really know how it's all gonna work out, but uh, it's, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be interesting. So take a look at this closing statement. This is an actual closing statement that I took all of the important confidential information out. This is what it looks like. Do you see those two lines where the arrow is pointing? buyer's commission, seller's commission. Do you see that? Where do you think all that money's coming from? Where do you think that's coming from? That is coming from the proceeds of the sale and the buyer is writing the check. Money's coming from the bank, it's coming from down payment, additional funds needed. Not every time, but a lot of times. An old crusty guy told me one time, whoever writes the check is paying the commission. I said, that's pretty good. Also, a real quick story. A friend of mine actually uh, had a buyer and uh, they put an offer in on the house and uh, the homeowner had the floodplain incorrect in the home disclosure statement, okay? Also, the entire side of the house had been removed because of a stucco problem, and that was not disclosed either, okay? And there was a, quote, stucco report associated with the listing, and my friend, the agent, read the report and saw in the report the whole side of the house was replaced. That's pretty important information. Floodplains wrong, side of the house had been removed. They redid their offer and everybody signed it real quick like. So a really good agent is really, really valuable. So just be aware of that, okay? Um, my name is John Weber and uh, I have a great team, the John Weber team. I am with Charter One Realty. Oh, that's another thing. The public, when they see that 21,000 check, they go, Oh boy, Weber made 21,000. I didn't make 21,000. It's a split with the brokerage company. Checks are made to the brokerage company and they throw a couple shekels my way. Pretty much like that. There are 100% companies, okay? And they get all the commission, but there's different situations within the company. So uh, anyway, they think we make all the easy money. 
I used to manage a salesman years ago, and I said, because he worked his butt off. He sold so much property, worked so hard. I said, what do you think your hourly wage would be? And he goes, minimum wage, minimum wage. Divide the hours into my annual income, because he's always working. A good realtor's always working. We encourage you to come down. Maybe the next video I'll do on handicapping thoroughbred horses. If that's what you want to see, give a thumbs up. Come see us, the John Weber team. We'll find your dream home under the new rules of the game. Game changer. So this is a beautiful four bedroom, three and a half bath home that's listed for 800,000. Did I buy a house? Did you buy a house? Yeah. What do you mean did you buy a house? I signed a contract. Ma'am, you never signed any contract. I don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, where was I? Cut. That's number two. Taking advantage of old women. Mm-hmm.